thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. I would like to ask you to consider packing shoeboxes year-round. God will bless, and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one. Let's go ahead and make your way into the auditorium. We, uh, Miss Shonda isn't feeling good, so let's pray for her in agreement. Lord, we just come to you and we just pray, Lord, that you would touch Miss Shonda, whatever she needs, and let's pray she'll be getting leveled out. We just pray for your healing touch, Lord, and your power. Thank you that we can lift up the sick, Lord, and we can pray for the sick. And we just pray for her and ask you to watch over and keep your hand upon her tonight with your healing touch in Jesus' name. Everybody see it? All right. Well. Make our way on in. We'll get started. We're going to uh, run over some prayer requests, and then we got a special song coming up in just a second. Alice Boykin, Tracy Barnett, Levi Smith, Tommy Boykin, Tammy Landry, Unspoken, and Shirley Smith. Anybody else have a prayer request, Miss Judy? Else? Wes has a praise report. 36 year anniversary yesterday. Amen. That's awesome. 36 years. That's awesome. Miss Cindy? Roger and Lillian White. Miss Cindy's birthday today. Happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Sheila? Praise report from Sheila. Amen. Liver functioning. man hey that's a good that's a good report amen all right lay it on us hey miss oh hubby that's good mr paul's heart's in time that's good that's a praise report all right anybody else yes ma'am elizabeth All right, lift up Elizabeth. Yeah, we just got through praying for her. Yeah, we we put her up top. All right, anybody else? All right. Yes, ma'am. All right, Emerlyn. Jimmy. Randy. Randy Dolan. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Jimmy. We've been praying for Mr. Randy for a while. Fighting a good fight. <coughs> Miss Bobby. Tammy Moore. All right. Anybody else? Miss Allison is doing good. She's uh, 
getting better. It'll be a week tomorrow. She's been sleeping a lot. So, uh, but she's she's doing good. So thank y'all for your prayers. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and Miss Susan Davis, her mom, she's still in the hospital. Uh, they put a colostomy bag on her, and she is doing better, <clears throat> but just trying to get her strength back. So they started some uh, rehab on her. So that's that's good. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, we love you. We praise you for all you do for us. We thank you for being so good to us, Lord. We lift up every person on this list, those that are in, in need of healing. We just pray that you are Jehovah Rapha. We know that. We ask you to touch them, to strengthen them. Lord, those that need peace or comfort, Lord, that are going through hard times, we ask you to guide doctors' hands as well. Thank you for the gift of doctors. We realize where they got their wisdom from, from you. And those that are going through a hard time or healing up or that need strength or have lost a loved one or grieving, we just lift up each person tonight on this list. We pray that you are the great I am. We ask you to show yourself strong on their behalf. And may they feel the power of our prayer as we lift each each one up in Jesus' name. Everybody said? All right. I'm going to get Miss, Miss Cheryl and Miss Charles step up here. If you need a booklet, go ahead and get it, the Saddle Up booklet. We'll finish up tonight. I really enjoyed this saddle up. And I want you to take these home because you can uh, look over them. I promise you, out of all the scriptures we went through, we didn't retain all that last week or the week before, right? So take it home and study it. Look at just this couple here. They're going to they're gonna lead us in a song. Y'all sing along with us. You probably know this song. It's Mansion Over the Hilltop. Sing around. Cover show. <laughs> okay. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below a little silver and a little gold but in that city and will shine I want a gold one that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday to that city I want a mansion a harp and a crown I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday under we will never more wonder but walk on streets that are purest gold. 
job. Good job. Thank y'all. Wasn't that a blessing? Amen. There. Blessing to us. Thank you for that piece of pecan pie, too, Miss Cheryl. That's a praise report. Hey, Scott, would you make sure the air is on about 71 over there? I kicked it down over there. Hey, I want to thank uh, Moses, Noah, or Gideon, whatever you want to call it. I'm joking. He answers it all. Moses, Scott, and uh, Mr. Ed. I've heard that mic pop for a long time. I got tired of hearing that mic pop, so I thought we started tracing it down, and so we found it over there. Moses shooting us numbers, me and Ed. So we found it, uh, another mic, and we were going to run it on top of the stage, just stop all that popping to change it out. And Scott said, hey, I, I climb through attics all the time. So we sent him under the stage, and he came out under there like a cat squirrel. So I didn't even have to tape the mic cord down. So <laughs> anyway, we, we're thankful that thing ain't popping no more. It's, it sounded, sounded a lot better. Amen. So thank you guys for helping. Mr. Ed, we was all getting with it over there. Quick announcements. If you're new to Jasper County Cowboy Church, welcome to Jasper County Cowboy Church. I know most of you, but there's probably a visitor or two in the crowd. Um, we don't pass the hat at Cowboy Church. The wooden church is in the back, one in the foyer on the right. That's where you give your tithes and offerings. And uh, I just want to say thank you for your faithful giving. We couldn't do what we do. We're always doing something. It, it, it's just always something going on. And in order to catch a fish, you got to get your hook wet. Amen? It's not complicated. You know, church has been around a long time, and you'd think we'd get it figured out. But our job is to share the gospel, and you got to put a hook out there. And our arena is basically at the Cowboy Church. Our arena is kind of like our life center. Amen? We draw a lot of unchurched people, and, and if just one person heard the gospel, it would be worth it. But we get the privilege to share it with, with quite a few people. Uh, just this coming weekend, we got the fall festival coming up on Saturday, so make sure and sign up if you hadn't already. But we're always doing something at this church to get outside of our four walls. Let's say that together outside of our four walls the first way we get outside of the four walls is when you leave church is like a pep rally but when we go out that door that's when service really begins amen and uh so anyway thank you for your faithful giving men's prayer break breakfast every monday at 6 a.m don't forget every day we do a devotion at 6 40 a.m you can watch that at any time throughout the day uh at your convenience on our Facebook page. We also do Tuesday testimonies at 7 p.m. That was real good last night with Mr. Jody's uncle. Uh, if you got a child in the nursery, watch the displays, round pen, men's and women's Bible study every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Celebrate Recovery meets upstairs at 6 p.m. Stop by the sale barn. I'm, I'm sporting my one of my new hats. They got all kinds of goodies. When you go in the foyer, sale barn will be on your left opposite the kitchen. The ladies have a neat ministry in there. Stop by and check it out. We have a drive through pantry. If you know somebody in need of food or if you want to donate food, the pantry is right over here on the east side of the building. You can drive right up to it, put something in it, or if you need something, get it out. That's what it's for. Uh, men's gathering tomorrow night. We've already got 40-something men, 45 already. So if you hadn't already signed up, make sure and sign up. I'm going to uh, – anybody need to sign up that hadn't – isn't already on the men's list? What, raise your hand if you hadn't already got on ours. Make sure we ain't missing nobody. Mr. Tracy will set that back at the welcome desk. And uh, if, if you want to bring somebody, that's fine. Just bring them on. Uh, I'm going to challenge you today. Uh, men, it's really easy. If you tell some guy you're going to shoot, skeet, and eat fish, they'll usually come. Amen? Praise God. So, really, get on the phone tomorrow. Invite somebody. Uh, you never know. Uh, God may lead you to that right person. And, and make sure, and I challenge you to think of somebody and invite them uh, to come to the men's deal. Uh, our building is moving on. How many of you see that nice ramp? We're getting that thing set up. we got a few things to button up, and we'll have our final inspection. So that, that'll be a, be a great day. Amen. All right. YouTube. I forget to announce this I'm always trying to think ahead outside of the box amen and I'm always thinking I called Rachel this evening I said I know you're off but I said 
tomorrow let's do some research so we want to push the youtube channel as well as jasper county cowboy church most of us have facebook but you'd be surprised there's lots of people that may not but they could go to youtube so we already have it we upload the the sunday services on there we're going to probably uh, i try to do uh you know i have people that i didn't even know they they don't go to our church they live one to two hours away but they'll come up the other day allison was out of town and when uh one of the young men come up and said man i love it when chet does those horseshoe videos i don't even think he goes to church so every week i'm gonna try to do a video with a horse i don't do a lot of horses anymore but i do enough to do a video amen so uh i'm trying to just put look at putting some of that on youtube as well but it's jasper county cowboy church and we're almost done with our announcements. Let me see. Rachel's got me an important list other than my chicken scratch. There'll be a uh, fall fest this Saturday, October the 29th, uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. If you would like to be a part, sign up at the welcome desk. If you are going to help us, uh, Miss uh, Debbie asks us to be here at 3 p.m. All right. Operation Christmas Child. We showed a video in here earlier. We'll show that again Sunday. We had a brother already bring a box back. I don't know if he found Chad. I don't know where to, what to do, but anyway, I, I told him to holler at you. He may not already, but we're getting some boxes in, and uh, that's a great idea when this is all done. We're going to put them up here on the stage and pray over them. Amen. And uh, everybody can get involved in Operation Christmas Child. We can all come up with 20 bucks. Amen. If we can't, uh, well, come see me, and I'll put you to work at my house one, for a couple of hours, and we'll give you $20. Amen. <laughs> Right now, I'm doing a lot of duty, so I might just hire you on. You never know. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> do what? I don't have to cook. And the only way I can do this and get everybody in, in, in covered is to say thank you, guys. Uh, we may pass the hat one Sunday for some bigger britches for me and Allison when this is over. Because I went in my office, and you can't even see the top of it. It's got food on it again. So... Get with me Sunday before anybody brings any food. I'm not sure we can eat what all's on that table between now and Sunday. So, but thank everybody for your prayers. Most importantly, taking care of us, man. Uh, we're 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 rocking and rolling. Everything's going good. Just uh, I'm I'm the I'm the dog kennel supervisor. Just thought I'd let you know that. Amen. <laughs> I do. I feed the cats. I like the cats. <laughs> Men's retreat tomorrow at October 27th, which is Thursday, skeet shoot and fish fry at 6 p.m. Miss Melissa said she's going to give the first person that comes to her $500 cash. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Friday, Friday, anyone that wants to help prepare for Fall Fest on Friday, be here at 1 p.m. All right, that's Miss Kayla. He was looking for me earlier. Is that it? All right, good deal. 1 p.m. to help out with Miss uh, Debbie, uh, Miss Kayla. Stand up, Miss Kayla, so everybody, in case somebody new wants to help out. <laughs> she loves the spotlight. Do you want to say anything, or are we good? Friday at 1 o'clock, if you could help out. And uh, if you'll remind me tonight, I'll put it on the church page, too, and uh, get it out there. All right, men's retreat tomorrow night. Skeet shoot, 6 o'clock. Is that good? Skeet shoot. Uh, we got the thrower at Okay. Well, we got a couple of horses out here that if they're not, if you can't shoot off of them, you will be after tomorrow night. They'll be, they'll be gun broke. Amen. And the cows. Can't you see them cows? We'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, CPR class is the date is changed to November the 5th. So we're going to just found that out today. Mike had to switch that date. It's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please sign up at the welcome desk if you'd like to come. So that, that does change the date. November the 5th. Sunday, November 20th, will be our church Thanksgiving meal. Uh, pl please sign up to bring food, whatever you're going to bring at the welcome desk. The uh, hospital, the kitchen team is going to do a ham, do ham, turkey, and chicken and dressing. Can I get a good amen? All right. We have a guest speaker coming to the church. Everybody suck your hat down and listen to me a minute. Even in the foyer, y'all listen up. Wednesday, November the 9th, we've got a guest speaker coming in. And uh, none other than our church secretary, Miss Rachel. She's going to give her testimony. 
of how God has helped her through the loss, even though she lost her son. And uh, so you don't want to miss that. So that's a Wednesday night, November the 9th. I've, I've been coaching on her for a while, and she finally committed. I did step on her foot, but she committed. <laughs> I said, no, she, she's ready to do it. She did a testimony at Bond Weir Baptist Church. So <laughs> Wednesday, uh, November the 9th. Yeah, we could just go live. <laughs> but that would be good. Wednesday, November the 9th. And I think we're good. Don't forget about YouTube channel. And if you have your, I got an extra saddle up here somehow. At least it ain't Mr. Eldridge's. I grabbed Eldridge's saddle up deal and just was looking all through it for a piece of paper that I lost. And he said, that's mine, Pastor. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got jokes tonight, huh? <laughs> Amen. Marvin, you you wouldn't let me borrow hundred dollars, would you? He said two percent interest, but I got a better deal for you. I'll pay you back when my humpback brother straightens up. Is that is that a good deal? <laughs> Jimmy may be in on that deal too. We borrow hundred dollars, we'll pay it back when my humpback brother straightens up. All right. <laughs> hey let me share something with y'all. Most of us in here live a day or two. You need to find some ways to enjoy and laugh in life. Life is too hard. It's too short not to enjoy. I mean, every day is not a laughing day. But find some things that you can laugh about. Amen. I got so tickled. Y'all know my buddy Nelson. And uh, he's one of my greatest friends. And we... we he, his wife's in the nurse home, and I try to encourage him. And so we talk during the day. He's retired, and you know he's the one that's got the white hair. And he walked into the nurse home. His wife has a little dementia, and she said, "Oh, look, here comes Peter Cottontail <laughs> with that white hair on his head." <laughs> but we were talking today, and he told me his son. They're big hunters, and last year his son got off work. He was so excited, and so they're sitting in a deer stand, and Nelson locks in down a pipeline. And he said, good Lord. <laughs> and his son said, what is it, Daddy? What is it? So he's grabbing his gun, and he said, it's a crow. <laughs> Boy, we have laughed. His son said, Dad, come it. <laughs> his old heart got beat. He said, it's a crow. <laughs> it's a crow, son. <laughs> so, but, you know, whatever your sense of humor is, find some ways to laugh. Amen. Of course, I'm still serious about loaning, borrowing a hundred dollars you know and paying it back when my humpback brother straightens up but you do got to find ways to laugh amen and enjoy life we're going to go in our book to produce remember this is our last week it's a gather you gather cattle for a reason you doctor them and we feed them so they can grow and us as christians we have to feed off of god's word there was a ton ton there's no way we could dig into every scripture that we looked at last Wednesday night on what the Bible is to us and for us. So go back and, and study this. I guarantee you, it, if, if you want some meat of the word, there's a lot of scriptures here. So tonight we're on our last chapter called Produce. Let's say it together. Produce. So we want to produce for God. So we will hit the ground running. Let's pray. Lord, teach us tonight. Help us to work on our gifts and abilities that you've given us. Sometimes we cut ourselves short. And we don't realize that we, we each are individually gifted. May we discover that, and may we produce for the kingdom of God, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody said? So we want to be productive for the kingdom of God. Now, look at, on your page here where it says, this is the third chapter of Produce. It says, no rancher wants an unproductive cow. She uses valuable resources but offers nothing in return. She is usually culled from the herd. Likewise, God wants us to be fruitful for him. Let's say that together. God wants us to be fruitful for him. We're going to say it one more time, even those watching online. God wants us to be fruitful for him. It brings him great glory, and he provides us with everything we need to do it. So, man, that gets my attention to think that for me to produce something for God, and it doesn't, we think producing for God is some 
wild, crazy experience or only a few people on the planet can do it. That is not true. God uses his people. He wants us to be fruitful. It brings him great, great glory, and he provides us with everything we need to do that. Now, here's the scripture. It's 1 John 15, 8. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Isn't that cool? That when we, we produce fruit, it brings great glory to our Heavenly Father. So here we go. We're going to look at spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts, number one, it says, are given by the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the two blanks. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 through 6, I didn't mark these in my Bible, but Miss Cheryl's got them up faster than I can do it anyway. So let's read these scriptures. It says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve, help me out, the same Lord. We, we have different gifts. There's different kinds of service. Thank God for the hospitality team. I just Every time I look out there on Wednesdays, I see the hospitality team. Amen? And, but we all do different things. We all have different service. We have different gifts. But God works, God works in different ways, but it is the same God who do, does the work in how many of us? All of us. Let's say it together, in all of us. So within every person here, you have gifts and talents in you. There's not another you out there. No spouses say amen, right? But there really is not another you out there. God makes us unique, but there's gifts and talents that we have unlike nobody else. And so the, we are given these gifts by the Holy Spirit. They're given to every Christian. Amen? Every Christian, not just one or two where we think, well, I'll, I can't do like so-and-so does. You're not made to do the same thing. No, no two of us are alike. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 and 11, spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit to every Christian. It says a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can what? Help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives the message of special knowledge. The same great faith to, a, to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives, he gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. So you see a lot of different gifts here. I mean, there's gifts of kindness and, and, and all. there's so many things that you and I can do. Sometimes we've just been gifted to smile and bring joy to people's lives. And that, that's, that's just as important as Billy Graham preaching to millions of people. It takes all of us. Our job is, is to do what we're called to do. And you find out when you start following God, it's, it's a cool journey. Because you start out just doing whatever you can find to put your hand to. Amen? And then, you know, God, you may stay doing that the rest of your life. Then he may move you or something else. That's what I did. It's nothing fancy about it. I just started taking out the trash at the Cowboy Church in Trinity, Texas. And did it with a good heart. Worked a job there at the prison and, and served. And then, you know, God, did, you know, made some changes in my life. But you'll find out that things will change in your walk with Jesus. I mean, maybe what you was doing at one time, he may move you into another arena, but you just, that's how you find out what you're good at. Hey, Ben, when you first start playing football, they don't say, hey, man, you look like a wide receiver. And now you may look like one, but you don't know until you get on the field sometimes. You know, you may, man, I thought I was a wide receiver. I'm actually a cornerback, or I'm actually a safety, or I'm a running back, or I'm a, a lineman. So you got to get in the game to figure out you'll find your place. God will see to it if you seek him that you'll find your place. And if you try something and it doesn't, it isn't something that works for you, you don't get discouraged. 
there's probably a million things you can do for God. <laughs> there's no telling. So if we try something, now I've tried some things that I, I stink at. Not very good at it. I can witness to a cat squirrel in the woods and he's liable to give his life to Christ. Amen? <laughs> but that's okay. That's, that's, I, 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 God has given me a gift to communicate. Now, if you only knew me pre-Jesus, that's a miracle. It makes me want to tear up. That is, to you, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, he said he was a quiet kid. If you only knew. But that didn't, I didn't, you know, get saved on a uh, Wednesday night and on Thursday decide I'm going to speak in front of people. Believe you me. It was a process of time. And you don't really know, it's kind of a cool ride. Because God's running the ship. You don't have to work out all the details. Can I get a good amen? I don't like roller coasters, but it's kind of like riding a roller coaster. I mean, God's going to take, he, he's going to take you through this journey. And you really sometimes don't even know exactly where. But it's a good thing. When we, <sighs> spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit to every Christian when they are saved. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and verse 14. It says, and now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. Now verse 14 says, the Spirit is God's what? Guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us. Let's say that together. He has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. So these gifts are given when, when we become a Christian, when we accept Christ, when we surrender. Just like the thief on the cross, it wasn't a, a real complicated deal. He said, Lord, forgive me and remember me when you enter your kingdom. It's Spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit to every Christian when we are saved, to fill in the blank. The next one is to serve others. Let's say that together again, to serve others. See, the way up in the kingdom is down. The humbler we are, the more we open ourselves up for God to use us. The older we get seems to be the less pride we have. Maybe not always. Maybe not always. But usually, the older we get, the more we realize everything we have comes from God. We become more humble. Remember when Jesus, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, noticed they were religious people. We don't need religion. We need a relationship with Christ. See, religion just is a bunch of do's and don'ts. Relationship with Christ is, is, is the real deal. So religious people brought a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery to Jesus, right? And I have a question too, where was the man? I mean, it takes two to tango. Amen. And so, but they bring this lady. We all know Jesus gets down on his knee and draws in the sand. We don't know exactly what it was. We all got our idea. I mean, it could be a lot of things. I just wonder if it wasn't some mistakes they made. And then he said, I tell you what we'll do. Let he who has not ever sinned, you rear back and wind up and throw the first rock. And the Bible says they left out from the oldest to the youngest. The older we get, it gets a little easier to lay our pride down sometimes. Amen? So the way up in the kingdom is down. Jesus said, the greatest among you shall serve. Amen? Thank God that we can serve. And we're, we're put on this earth to serve other people. And it's not natural to our flesh to serve other people. But if you will serve and be a servant, number one, unto Christ, he will bless you. I don't care what people do to you. I don't care how bad they wrong you, as long as you don't throw a fit and get a blanket and a pacifier. Remember that last week? You'll be all right. 
God will fight your battles for you. One of my favorite worship songs, one of the verses says, When I fight, I fight on my knees. It's hard for us men, amen? I had a, I helped somebody out today and I had a horse with a partially torn spitz ligament or whatever and there were some problems. And so I put this shoe on a horse on the way down to church about noon this mare went to, she was hurting and she was yanking on my back and boy, I, I was getting after it with her. Finally, one time I just got her on one side and said, you're going to have to eat some more. And I just held her up on one side. That is not smart. She hurt me. She yanked on my back. <laughs> made, me, made me a little mad. And, but horses don't speak English. But when you get mad, you, you, we, we do things. How many of you ever done anything you wish you hadn't? That's 100% participation. <laughs> but pride goes before a fall. Me and Kip talked about this not too long ago, about the way up is down in the kingdom. It's so opposite. The world says, I'm going to climb the ladder. God says, you, you remain humble and I'll help you. So it doesn't matter what people do to you. And I've been in ministry 29 years. I've had some crazy stuff happen in my life. You have no idea after 29 years. If you knew my whole story, you'd probably be proud of me. And if I knew your story, I'd be proud of you too because you're still here and you're still fighting. And, and, and everybody's had somebody do something wrong to them. We have. It's, it's, it's life if you live long enough, but your job is to let that go. It takes a process of time. But when you do and you become a servant of Christ and you don't let someone else shackle you, I'm telling you, there's no limit to what God can do with you. Y'all don't want me to start preaching, do you? He can take folks from Beulah and use them. Amen? We're here to serve other people. So when, when our feet hurt and we're doing something, serving, and we, for some reason the Lord blesses us so much when we do something, it's usually big. <laughs> and our feet hurt a little bit that night. But I go home and I thank God that my feet hurt when we do stuff at this church. I'm glad I got feet that do hurt. But I'm thankful that he blesses us. <laughs> at that bull riding school, if I had a dollar for every time I climbed the fence, I'd be rich. <laughs> but I'll thank God that my feet hurt when I get we get in from doing something big at church. Amen? Because he will use you. We're here to serve, and last but not least, to grow God's church he gives us spiritual gifts to grow his church to serve others last Ephesians 4 11 through 16 it says now these are the gifts Christ has given the church the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers that's the five-fold ministry they refer to their responsibility is to equip say that with me to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the Man, this is elementary stuff. That's my job as a pastor is to equip you. Now, I can't do it for you. Neither can you do it for me. Amen? Remember Nathan last week with the blanket and the pacifier? I thought, man, that's a good example. So we are to grow by getting in the Bible. So the five-fold ministry, apostles, pastors, prophets, teachers, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, which is the what? The body of Christ, all of us. Verse 13, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord. Everybody say that with me, that we will be, that's where he wants us to get. Now, I promise you we haven't arrived, but he wants us to be mature in the Lord. So when I am mature in the Lord and something crazy happens, I look at it from a spiritual aspect. There's several things should be going on. Number one, Satan's probably got a bullseye on you. One of these days, I'm always thinking of ways to preach sermons that are simple. Believe it or not, where I went to Bible school, I used to go back and teach there quite a bit. And who would have thunk it? Least likely to succeed straight out of... Beulah, I go back and teach, you know, and, and talk about the things we did as outreaches at our church, you know, and 
But it, it, to me, it's just basic elementary stuff. My grandbabies, I could teach them. We teach them. I take my granddaughter and grandson fishing the other day. You know what I did? First thing was we got a pole. Heavy theology here tonight. We put a bait on the fishing line. And we threw it in the water. We brought it in. We didn't. We went to the fish. We went down to the pond, and they loved going fishing. And the same thing. We're fishers of men. It's a simple deal. We compl religion tries to complicate it, but our job is to. <laughs> these spiritual gifts are given to further God's church. When we mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ, then we will no longer be immature like. Nathan, like I remember I stole his blanket. I give him five dollars for that blanket. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> he took it too, didn't he? Measuring up to the full complete standard of Christ, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clear they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of, we're talking about Jesus here, he is the head of his body, which is what? Jesus is the head of this church. Now, he may have a pastor, and we may have leaders and elders and lay pastors, but Jesus should be the head of this church. And he is the head of this church. And as long as we let him run the ship, we're going to be all right. And our job is to represent him and to go fishing for people all the time. We got a new member, several new members in the last three to four weeks. One of them came up to me, and I, I, if I can catch them, it's very busy right after church. I said, how did you, how'd you hear about our church? She said, well, I was at Walmart. And somebody asked me to church and said, you know, doggone it, I'm just going to try it. She said, I love it, turned in my green sheet, been here two weeks. At Walmart. And I'm, you know, the person didn't say, okay, hallelujah, I want to invite. Just in conversation, just be real. Invited somebody to church at Walmart. And I'm sure Walmart and Jasper, when Jasper County Cowboy Church goes in there, people in Walmart ain't got a chance. Because we will invite somebody. That doesn't mean they're going to show up the next week. If they do, that's like God putting a bone out there for you. But they may show up at another church 15 years from now somewhere. Keep planting those seeds. I've got to shut up and read these verses. He makes the whole body fit together what? Perfectly. He put our bodies together. He puts the body of Christ together. And you know what happens when people get a, a burr under their saddle or sideways on one another? In a way, it's kind of a good thing because it gets the rough edges off of us. He put us together kind of like a family. Amen. And it doesn't mean everything's always perfect. If, if you ever find that place, let me know. We'll come hang out with you. <laughs> but he puts us together for a reason. And a mature believer handles that, works it out, and you go on with your walk because you're, 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 you're in the family of God. But an immature believer with a blankie and a passy could, you know, act in an immature way. That's why he said he wants us to grow up. So thank God we're, we're, we're growing in the Lord. Amen? No matter if you've been saved a day or five decades as each part does its own special work it helps the other parts grow it takes everybody so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love let's say it together the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love that's a powerful set of verses now these next ones I'm going to just let you take them home and do them these are a spiritual gifts test. It's very, very easy. There's no failing or passing. It just shows you where you're good at. For instance, it might be administration. Maybe it's discernment, evangelism. I take these tests all the time. I, I max out on evangelism, exhortation, giving, and leadership, and the rest of them. It, it, you'll find out where your gifts are. So let's skip on over past this test. You can take that on your own. It's, it's very, very easy to understand. You can list your top three gifts. Now at the bottom of the page here where the spiritual test is over, it says caution. 
Spiritual gifts tests are neither perfect or infallible. They, on, they only offer you guidance as to what your spiritual gifts may, in capital letters, be. To get further confirmation, evaluate your past experiences and ask others for feedback. Now on me, man, I was very, very quiet, but when I did give my life to the Lord, it just comes natural for me to be an encourager. I'm not some big fancy theologian, man. I don't know what I got, but they say it might be ADD, but my dad healed me of it with a leather belt when I was little. I got, now, I still had it a little bit, and I still do. It, it's hard for me. <laughs> it's hard for me to just, like, think on one thing. Have y'all noticed that? I do better. I, I may be, I get more done on the phone with Rachel or whatever when I got several things going on. Boy, my mind gets rolling, and I do better like that that you're probably totally different if, you, if most of you is like thank god i'm not like you but god made us all a little different but naturally I, I do my best to be an encourager and to encourage people because this is a burden god put on my heart many years ago the only thing you can take with you to heaven is someone else and it is the devil makes a living getting christians distracted on just really not much, just junk, <laughs> whatever it may be. And our job is to hold the row that God put before us. I preached a sermon on that one time about holding our own row. So here we go. Develop your gifts. We're going to read through these quick. Like babies, our spiritual gifts don't come uh, to us fully developed. They need to be nurtured. Here are some ways you can develop your spiritual gifts. Here we go. Number one. Learn about your gift. That's pretty simple, but yet very true. Learn about your gift. Seek out biblical passages and books that teach about your gift. So learn about your gift. Second is pray about your gift. Ask God to give you insight into how your gift may be best used and developed. And it's extremely important, even, even if some of our leaders didn't make it, if you're watching online, if you see a team leader or a lay pastor that couldn't be here, any of our elders see an elder that couldn't be here, they need to get this book because this is basic stuff, but it causes us to grow. You know, it's just human nature to just hang out in the recliner, spiritually speaking. Amen? But this is some basic stuff, but very, very true. So learn about your gift. Pray about your gift. Offer your gift. Put your gift to work when others ask for help. Amen? Most ministries need almost every gift. <laughs> we Put your gift to work. And that's why I want you to take that test, but do it on your own time. It's real, it's real simple. If you have any problems, let me know. Next one is evaluate your effectiveness. As you serve, you will discover where your gifts are most effective. Use them where? There. Notice, evaluate your effectiveness, and it says, as you serve, you will discover where your gifts are most effective. Let's say those first three words together, as you serve. It's as you serve. It's kind of like anything else. You have to take a step. You got to start serving him. Take out the trash, whatever God puts on your heart. That's what I did. I didn't know nothing about the Bible. I didn't. All I knew is Jesus saved me in that gravel parking lot the Wednesday night before it. I went and found my pastor and said, "Hey, man, what I what can I do here to help?" He said, "I don't want you to take out the trash." I was like, "Yeah, take out the trash, man." I loved my trash ministry. Amen. You know where he really got under my skin was, as I said, iron sharpens iron, and we knock the rough off each other. Ron can answer said, I want you to speak Wednesday night. I was like, hold on, buddy. You said take out the trash, but I was comfortable taking out the trash. But little did I know he and God had a, you know, they was, sometimes an eaglet has to be shoved out of the nest. That's right. Water that seed. And what you start out doing may not be 20 years later. Just, just bloom where you planted. God will show you all that kind of stuff. He, It'll all work out. Amen? So evaluate your effectiveness. Last, structure your life. I need to hear this. 
structure your life. Your gifts reflect God's purpose for your life. Consider them in every decision you make. Isn't that powerful? Your gifts reflect God's purpose in your life. Consider them in every decision you make. And we all have vastly different gifts. We can't, see, we're humans. Why do we do this? We want to categorize everything. Well, oh, so-and-so, they do such a good job at this, but me, I'm just over here. And then if we see somebody else, oh, yeah, boy, they do so good. We praise everybody else and beat ourselves up sometimes. But we all have different gifts and talents. I had a little couple in my church many years ago in Nacogdoches, and I started the church September the 1st, 1996. <clears throat> and... They had a lot of gifts. They were mature believers. They had been going to church since before I was born. But they had just, the, I'm not, but they were very hospitable. Like they, they wanted people in their house and they could cook good and they, they did all, the, everybody has different gifts. I mean, there's a whole list of them. We just read them earlier. But one thing, they were, they were very hospitable. They did not meet a stranger. If a visitor came in the church, it was over. They were going to go to them, and, and they were tactful. They knew how to say, hey, man, you know, we're glad you made it. They hope you can come back. And they were very blessed. They were gifted to pray for people. I mean, it was a burden on their heart. Now, me, I'm a prayer, but I'm an ADD prayer. I pray a lot of small prayers frequently throughout the day. That's okay. God makes us all different. But they were so, if ever I was sick, I always sought out Travis and Cindy. They took their time. They'd sit down. They'd sit down with me, look me in the eye and say, you know, how can we? They sincerely took the time to specifically pray for me. But that was one of their gifts. Still is. But we all have different gifts. Everybody smile at me. It's one of the best gifts God ever gave you is a smile. A smile speaks more than probably a hundred words sometimes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Using your gifts. This is our last page, I believe. Join a team. Almost all ministry departments in our church are run through teams. In our church, you can join a team by looking at the different teams. I just made this up. <laughs> it wasn't, there's a little cheat sheet in the back. But uh, looking at the teams, praying about it. Second one is pray about where you want to serve. And the third thing is reach out to a leader or myself, an elder, a lay pastor. And I left the last one blank. You can fill in whatever you want. But find a, a team that might interest you. It may not be a team that you stay on 25 years, but you serve in some area. And then, hey, uh, you'll find your spot. It takes some time. Current needs, I just put current needs below are some teams in our church that need help I put all because there's always somewhere you can serve we don't get too many people we can start two teams we can rotate people uh, if there's a team that that you would like to be a part of or even interested in just talk to the leader come talk to some of us the lay pastors talk to me we'll get you hooked up with the right people can I get a good amen, amen. we learn anything we want to produce for God man isn't it crazy we could spend literally the rest of this year and go into April or May next year breaking down all these verses about what the Bible is to us. About how God wants us to grow. Lay down our blankie and our passing and mature in Him. Now, I'm not saying we do have that. I'm just using it as an illustration. You may be the most mature person in this room, spiritually speaking. But you know what? God don't want you to stop growing. He don't want you to pull up the easy chair. He wants you to continue to mature because guess what? People are always coming behind you. You know, Paul was a great preacher. And he had Silas, who was another, a, a, a guy that kind of went along beside him in ministry. And he, amen. Paul and Silas on missionary journeys, and he took a couple of other guys with him. But guess what Paul also had? He had Timothy coming up behind him. So you have whatever you know. I don't care if you don't know but one verse. There's somebody out there that you could pour into. Then they know that verse. 
then when you start kind of pouring into them, what are you going to do? You're going to rise up higher. You're going to learn two verses. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we need a, uh, we need a Paul in our life, a mentor. Uh, we need a Barnabas, kind of somebody walking in our, our walk about similar to our walk with Christ, and we always need a Timothy. But Timothy also keeps us accountable, somebody that we're pouring into. I want to give you a couple of illustrations and I got seven minutes. And then I do have to get back and clean the dog kennel because I am the supervisor of the dog kennel. <laughs> Actually, I think Clint got the dog kennel for me tonight. Praise God. And fed the hogs. Ask Allison about her cooney cooney pigs. Marvin wants one so bad and Jimmy. Miss Kathy said, I like them pigs. Jimmy said, shut your mouth. <laughs> at the dinner table <laughs> shut your mouth don't mention them pigs no more <laughs> so gotta have a little fun but ask Miss Allison oh uh, Miss Kathy oh, before you leave she sent me pictures of the pig so come see the pig we got three pigs at home they have waddles on them all I know is when they have a litter they bring good money praise the Lord so I'm four pigs right now as long as they sell good <laughs> Amen. Several other men thought, you know, I kind of like pigs myself if they bring more money than a cow. When a pig has a litter, they don't just have one baby. I'm praying for multiplication with those piglets. Amen. All right. You know how blessed we are at our church. I want to give you some statistics that they are from the book of Chester Timothy Strange. You know that's my real name? Chester Timothy. My little, my, my, my sister, bless her heart, she's got dementia. And she don't know and much. And so I go in the other day and I said, this is your little brother. And she don't really know much. She looked me square in the eye and said, Jester Timothy Stray. She remembered my name. <laughs> and Miss Allison said, you know Chet's a, a pastor tears came down she said thank you Jesus it's amazing to me She, when it comes to Jesus she ain't forgot nothing <clears throat> but this is from a study not from Barna technology services this is from strain services I'm from Beulah but I got a little bit of sense and I figured out this fishes of me in 30 years ago it's, it's not complicated but we're very blessed at our church. I'm going to give you some numbers. Did you know this Jasper has 6,884 people lives here? Approximately. <clears throat> and not everybody lives within the city limits. But if you figure up our congregation with ease, we have 5% of our city comes to this church. 5%. Maybe that don't, you think, oh, no, that don't mean that. Yeah, we're just a little town. 6,884 people. I actually drove by the city limit sign twice to make sure I got it right. <laughs> and 5% is 344 people. And we have from 250 to 300 and something every Sunday. And that's not counting the 50 to 75 that are traveling or gone. And on Easter, we had 440 people. But in our city, approximately, and not everybody's from the, in the city limits, but that's 5%. And you're like, oh, that... That's big, guys. Let me give you some numbers. We're, we're very blessed by the grace of God. Houston, Texas has 2,288,250 people. If there was a church in Houston, Texas that reached 5% of their city, their congregation would be 114,412 members. Now, Lakewood's pretty big, but it's not 114,000. There might be 20. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying. Some of my heroes pastor country churches with 25 people. And I'm like, dude, you're reaching 10% of your community. One time at Beulah, when I pastored there about a year, we had 48 people. Now, I don't know how many people live in the community of Beulah now. It's grown, but... I mean, it, it, it at least was 10, 15% of the town. 
if you live if a church in Beaumont, Texas reaches five percent of their community, it would have six thousand one hundred and twenty seven members. It's not a church probably that big in Beaumont. I hope there is. If you lived in Lufkin, Texas and you reach five percent of your city, your church would have one thousand seven hundred and three members. I don't know of a church that big in Lufkin. I hope there is. If you lived in Nacogdoches and reached five percent of your city, there'd be one thousand six hundred and five members in your church talking about some big churches if a church in Woodville has 122 members they reach 5% of their city pretty cool see it's not about watching a big church on TV somewhere and saying oh god we're never going to get there actually there's a lot of churches in our community that's just as big or bigger you have to look at the demographics pastors used to come to me all the time and say oh I said where you live at what size I said man you're rocking it brother you're rocking it. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, man, you, you got to turn that TV off sometimes and do the math. Realize where you're at. It's a big, amen. We're, and it doesn't matter if it's one person or a thousand. We're here to reach souls. Can I keep going? I did Beaumont, so Orange come up. Orange has 19,169 people. To reach 5% of your community, it would take 958 members. So uh, we drive by some of the biggest churches in the country and don't realize. Little country church, reaching people. So uh, my point is, it's not about numbers because God's concerned about one. But I also know if a good fisherman, he go, he's going to catch it. We want to get as many baits in the water. If you lived in Center, Texas, 256 people would be 5% of your community. If you have a church in Kirbyville, 100 people would be 5% of your entire town. So we're very blessed at our church when you figure up our size town and the people that call this. There's no telling how many people call this their church home. They just don't all come on the same Sunday. So we are deeply blessed. You never get hung up in the book of numbers. One person back. I'm going to owe you one minute because I'm going to tell you a story. I pulled up out here today, and I got an old buddy that I talked to, Mr. Nielsen, and he was he was a little down in the dumps. And He said, what are you doing? I said, man, if you ever see my little Honda car sitting out at the arena, and I've just got it in a new uh, park, come see me. I'm good. I'm just out there looking around, just... That's just kind of where sometimes I go sit in the bleachers on Wednesdays early. <laughs> so if you see one old guy out there, it's probably me. <laughs> There's old hobo Chet. But I was just telling Nelson, you know, how God's been so good to us. And, and uh, I just think about how, how good he is and how he uses all of us. We're the killer bees. We get to serve God. We don't have to. We get to love him. And I don't care if I got to walk through hell barefoot. If there's a one person that needs to hear about Jesus, I'm kicking my shoes and I'm going. Because in the end, we're not going to stand before Jesus and say, Jesus, I didn't like the carpet that Aunt Fufu picked back in 1968 in my church. He ain't going to make a crap. <laughs> Did you know people have really had church fights over carpet colors? I'm like, dude, you need to get saved, and you need to get saved. And if you are, you need to rededicate and then step it up a notch, man. Lay the passy down. There's people really had arguments about church carpet. Lord Jesus, follow me. We'll get out there with some post hole diggers. We'll get some of that energy out of us. <laughs> we go home at night. We don't care. We just, Lord, help us. But God is good. And he cares about people. There was a young man in this church Sunday morning. When he first walked in, when we prayed, he just never acknowledged it. And as that service went on, he started cracking. When it's over, he found me and said, I need to talk to you. He said, I moved from California. I ain't know nothing about church. I've done and tried every drug under the sun. 
But he said, the way you guys explained everything today, simplicity, I said, you, you stuck a knife in my heart. I said, man, here's my phone number. We're going to get you hooked up here in the church, young man. That's what it's all about. I'm out of here. Lord, we love you. Help us to saddle up for you. Help us to gather and grow and produce. It's pretty simple. Forgive us when we fail you, when we fall short. And when we do fall short, Lord, may you help us to get up and dust off, suck it up and keep on marching. We're in the army of God. Help us to saddle up and be the men and women you called us to be. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Love you guys. Go check on my pretty bride. <laughs> That's right. May get Tracy to put the front end loader on that little John Deere tractor so we can put that food in it, <laughs> get it to the car. <laughs>